Fast frequency response. It's a new ancillary market in the Australian NEM, and it's been around for uh, the last six months or so, since October last year. I'm joined today by James Ha, our research lead for APAC, and I'm Hugo Batten, our managing director for APAC. And today we're gonna to deep dive into the FFR market and also the implications for battery economics. So James, can you just talk a little bit about what this new market is and which technologies are currently participating? Yep. Fast frequency response is a new type of contingency FCAS market. So a market that's designed to help stabilize the grid when there is a frequency disturbance, so a sudden imbalance in demand or supply. Mm. And in fast frequency, the responder is supposed to respond within one second, so a very rapid response time. Um, this market was introduced in October. We have two markets, in fact, a raise and a lower FFR market. Um, and since its introduction, we've seen a range of market participants register to provide the service. On the slide here, we've plotted on the left hand uh, side of the slide, the different units that were registered in February. And you can see that a lot of the capacity that was registered was batteries. Those mm. are shown in purple. There were some other units that were registered, including a brown coal plant, but really the lion's share of this market has gone to batteries so far. Since introduction, uh, AMO, the market operator, has been increasing the amount of FFR that it procures as well. The market started at just 50 megawatts each, but those have been the maximum amount has been rising, and particularly in the raised market, uh, AMO routinely procures more than 200 megawatts. Mm. So it sounds like you know, supply is increasing, particularly from batteries. Demand is going up, although that's likely to plateau over time. How has this played out over the first six months of prices? We've had quite different pricing outcomes in the raise and the lower mm. markets. So starting with the raise market, um, over time, as AMO has procured more and more of the service, we've actually had prices increase. They started out around $20 uh, averaged across the, the day, but by December, we had some weeks where prices were clearing in the $40 to $80 range. In the lower markets, we've actually had the opposite, where prices started out very high, but have come down as more and more participants have registered, whilst the market hasn't grown as quickly. Overall, the increase in uh, FCAS prices attributed to FFR has been somewhat offset by declining prices in the other contingency markets, mm. so the slower response time markets. And I suppose the key question then is how has this impacted battery economics? Have there been clear winners and losers and how much uplift has been delivered? There have been a handful of batteries that have really taken advantage of these markets since they commenced. Um, to call out three in particular, Walgrove in New South Wales, the Victorian Big Battery, and Hornsdale in South Australia, each made roughly a million dollars in fast frequency response uh, over the first four months since the market commenced. Um, over time, we would expect that the share of FFR revenue for all batteries mm -hmm. should decline, given the uh, growing number of batteries that we're expecting to come into the system. Yeah, I think we've got somewhere between six and eight gigawatts of batteries um, by the late 2020s, at yeah. least in our central scenario. And a lot of those assets are committed with various types of government funding and support. Yep. James, that's been a terrific overview of the FFR. Please do reach out to us if you'd like to discuss battery economics in the NEM in more detail. But otherwise, thanks for your time.